very good afternoon and welcome back to the touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wastiko. He's still with Ngaura Robert Osora has left a little bit, but she is going to be back during Fan Zone fan favorite segment. So we give focus on international football. But right now, it's matters rugby. We're reviewing Las Vegas' performance with focus on what Kenya Sevens has done. So, of course, two consecutive group losses against South Africa, so United States yeah. of America alongside France. Yes. And they're going to play their last clash tonight at 11.58 against Argentina. Yvonne Namai joins us. Yvonne, how have you been? I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> What's your opinion with regards to what is happening in Las Vegas? Uh, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first, let me make a very bold statement. Yes. Kenya might miss the Olympics uh, 2020. Let's start from there. So I think um, despite the talent, again, uh, there's, a, there's a huge leadership gap that is lacking just to, to give the X factor that the team needs to perform uh, at the Sevens World Series. Wow. <laughs> just mm -hmm. to actually reverberate what she said, we might miss out on the Olympics. Reason being, um, as we speak, um, South Africa blitz Boca at number five in the in the standings, and therefore that means they'll be required to qualify for the World Cup in Tokyo. For sorry, for the Olympics in Tokyo next year. If blitz Boca come back to qualify, then it becomes a problem for Kenya uh, on the African continent. But anyway, that one will address later on. <laughs> so I guess as guys supporting Kenya, they should also be supporting South Africa so that, yeah. <laughs> so that they finish fourth. Yeah. But yeah, um, look, I don't know why guys are acting shocked. Um, we knew it was coming, we knew this was going to be the case. Um, with the conditions that these guys have been given, it was going to be very tough for them to produce any results um, as what we've seen previously. With all the wrangles that have been happening within the Kenya Rugby Union and the politics that in there, it, it was going to be very difficult for these guys to perform to the level that we're used to seeing on the seventh circuit. Because you see, when it came out that, look, these players are going to have to pay, take a pay cut. Of course, then the senior players were not going to take that. It's just like any other job. I mean, Yvonne, if your job tells you today you're going to take a pay cut, you're going to leave, you know, I mean, even if it's significant. So, in coming the young boys, um, and while their talent, talented experience is very important, and exposure on the international stage is very important, which most of these guys don't have, uh, and that's why we're seeing the results that we're seeing. My only fear is that we continue performing like this, and then we get to the point that we're getting relegated. I mean, France is not even a core team on the seventh circuit, yet they're you know, beating us week in, week out this year. So it, it's sad, but um, you always congratulate these boys because uh, with the conditions that they've been given, it was going to be very hard to achieve anything more than what they're doing right now. I remember interviewing Sasha Mutai, one of the Kenya Rugby Union presidential candidates, and he says that we have a pool of, you know, talented players, just like he says, but the current environment doesn't favor their performance, even the technical bench. I don't know from where you sit. You've been actively involved in rugby. You have much experience with regards to this. To the same, what do you attribute our horrible performance to? Is it uh, because of these young players who don't have experience and uh, considering that most heavyweights refuse to sign contracts over uh, the pay cut or is it because of the transition in technical bench takeover? What's, what might be the reason behind the awful show in Las Vegas? Um, it's a basic lack of consistency in every element of uh, the team, from the environment, uh, the how change is managed in the team and everything. Talent is one thing, but it takes a lot more to, for actually that talent to translate into uh, results. Over the past uh, few years, and even by the time we were getting to, um, uh, to the era where we made uh, almost 100 points when we were with Mark Friday, there was a system that was introduced uh, which basically translated the high performance training that the team was taking into results at performing at that level. The level of, of the Sevens World Series is a different competitive level. Uh, so uh, psychologically and even physically you have to be prepared for it. So no matter what you do, unless you recreate that environment in your training, then you're not going to achieve it. Um, what the foreign coaches uh, helped us realize is that uh, environment is everything. What you do before is what um, is what uh, will determine whether you'll perform or not. And that's what um, Simiyu picked up, that's what Ayimba picked up, you know, and sort of uh, tried to continue. The wrangles that happen on the political side of um, the game affect that consistency because we've not been consistent in how we manage uh, the progression of these players. Some of these players we cry um, that we need all the time 
are people individually that did they're consistent even in their training their individual training is consistent to the high performance routine that they were exposed to way back way back as long as um, 2013 you know uh, the way they conduct themselves on and off the pitch attributes to the high performance training that they were exposed to during that period so it's easy for them to come and deliver even on short notice those are players we will call up we are seeing even their impact in the in the kenya cup you know it's so we, it's not it's not a matter of um, uh, their well-known names or they have done a lot for the country but it's a matter of the culture them they're being consistent and they, that's why they're, they're always hardly affected uh, uh, with the um, and rugby events within uh, rugby. So our issues um, is just that lack of consistency, the exposure. You have to remember there was a time we had um, a lot of uh, players representing, um, um, turning out for different uh, rugby outfits in satellite tournaments, yeah? And uh, that's one of the key things that uh, Mike Friday actually brought during his time. He opened up the talent to satellite tournaments. So he had a pool of players who would play in the Sevens World Series, but his remaining pool of players were not sitting back here and playing our local league they were either attached to samurai attached to um, to other clubs playing the satellite tournament that are also part of the world series so that competition it, it has to be very strategic and even when you talk about strategic partnerships those are some of the key things that we should be looking for we should looking for we should be looking for more professional outfits who will absorb all this talent because you if you watch the sevens the local seven circuit you have to admit we we have really good players we can easily call in 50 50 players who will be able to uh, contain the high performance that is required to perform at national level. But if it's not, they're not consistently exposed to that, then we're not doing them any justice. Um, I think the... Um, the litmus test will be Hong Kong, uh, where, where, where we'll see our competition. We'll see Zimbabwe in action, we'll see Uganda in action. So if that will give us an idea of how our qualification to Olympics will actually mm -hmm. turn out to be. And if we look back at the, uh, at the previous years, uh, Zimbabwe have been very consistent. It's only last year, the last season, that they missed out reaching the finals. But they're always reaching the finals of the Hong Kong qualifier mm -hmm. tournament. So even as we're looking at uh, Blitzbok and not performing, we also have a very huge threat in Zimbabwe. Who also last uh, last time almost cost us a, a place in the Olympics. Yes. You know, if it wasn't that last minute Tombachi effort, yeah. we were out, and Zimbabwe was going to go to the Olympics. Yeah. So we have to look at. Um, the landscape from that the consistency some of uh, our, our neighbor uganda what is wh what are they doing zimbabwe we have to remember most of their players play in europe mm. so they're exposed to that high level of uh, of competition even if they qualify for they qualify for the sevens world series they're going to to be to have a very good pace they're going to be very consistent in the number of points that they're going to accumulate per leg uganda our neighbors are playing here mm -hmm. in our kenya cup and they have a strategic partnership with cheetahs in south africa so they are getting exposed their whole team went down to south africa for that training mm. you know so if teams institutional teams like um, kcb would replicate the same then it means there's something lacking at national team level that is limiting the performance of some of our players um, by the time oj was being um, appointed captain uh, of the team I think the coach had that mindset to sort of try and instill because OJ as a player, even the environment that he's exposed to, he's a leader. And he's, he, he's a, we, we just say he's a route one guy, you know. He, he's always knowing that I have to cover this ground and I have to gain as much as possible because the end means that if I don't score, then I'm not performing. So um, I think our greatest undoing is the lack of consistency. And um, I, it's, I don't think it should be limited to only political but also technical. Ngaro, Kenya, Kenya Sevens is well known for their glittering show on international front. Of course, besides rugby athletics, which is mm. also an individual sport, uh, I've raised Kenyan flags mm. so high. But the government, the role of the government is also uh, instrumental in trying to motivate the team. Mm. I don't know, do you think the government's uh, failure to support uh, Kenyan boys can also be attributed to their horrible show in the beginning during of the last three legs now? In the beginning of this segment, we talked about how important it is for federations to run the sports well. Um, a sports um, uh, results in this country at least is based on how federations run it. We talked about that when we were starting this. Yes. Um, the government on two separate articles in the last one week have come out saying that they will only go back into supporting Kenya rugby after the elections of the Kenya rugby union. That should show you something about the, what the government is thinking about supporting the Kenya rugby union. So 
while granted yes we want to there is sort of accountability we, doubts we, exactly there, there is if it's not government it's corporate kenya no one really has confidence in the game and that's what the problem is coming in so uh, let's not shy away from the fact uh, all these things we keep on talking about it's, it's it's it boils down to the consistency one is talking about it boils down to good management it, do, it boils down to accountability as you as you're putting it it boils down to you know uh, money being in there because all these systems development everything you require money you know they're talking that song that says no romance without finance i know it's a different thing altogether <laughs> but it, it boils down to the same thing you you we just need to get our house in order. If at all we need, we are, we are going to see the results that we've been expecting uh, or, or we've grown to expect from the Kenya 7 team and the Kenya 15 team. We just need to get our house in order uh, in whatever way we need to proceed with it. And Kenya Rugby Union elections looming around the corner, I think, mm -hmm. happening next, this month, mm -hmm. in March. Mm -hmm. Do you think the outcome of the polls might determine the dynamics and landscape <laughs> in terms of performance of the servants you know the most of things, things thing. will change or they will remain you know the most unfortunate, like they are right now the most unfortunate thing uh, and I, I speak for rugby is um and i want to blame both sides i want to blame the fans and i want to blame the people who've been given the mantle to run the game i blame the fans because they don't get involved in the running of their clubs the yes your supporters you're a supporter of a club whether it's harlequins whether it's kcb or it's cabras but you're not involved in the in the day-to-day -day running of the club so when the agms come up and the elections come up you end up choosing people very flimsy people who represent you at national level now these are the people who end up choosing the people who are going to run the game so from that perspective i do blame the fans in uh letting the game go the way it's gone on the other hand i also do blame the people who now become the uh, tasked uh, with running the game because you get there and for some reason you stop focusing on growing the game you start focusing on individual um, um, or, or targets for lack of a better word so however way it goes and whoever comes in uh, you only hope that it's somebody who's going to have the game uh, at heart somebody who is not really driven by their personal interest and if it's personal interest it's to see the game grow is to see the game reach the heights, which I believe uh, we can be able to achieve in this country. So, uh, however it goes, um, I just hope that whoever comes in um, is really focused on growing the game because the game has taken a really big hit in the last four years or thereabouts. Yvonne, as we speak right now, the current boss of Kenya Rugby Union, Richard Omuela, has been trying to seek candidacy at the continental level to be the vice president of Rugby Africa, but he recently was crying foul. Uh, uh, and saying that he, he is getting shortchanged by our Ugandan counterparts mm -hmm. and there was that uh, sort of agreement that mm -hmm. is being violated going by his words. Of course, I spoke to him and he confirmed the same. The performance of rugby locally, can it play uh, an integral role in the success of uh, one of our who is seeking leadership at not only continental level but even international scene as well? Yes, 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 yes. It plays a, a very, very, very huge role. Um, I think um, despite any successes that um, um, Richard has had in the previous years, uh, the past uh, the past two years have not done him justice at all uh, because you have to remember he was um, he was vying for re-election for chairmanship uh, with the promise that uh, they're going to that sponsors wanted him actually that was the political tagline that he was using that uh, sponsors have demanded that he comes you know um, in retrospect he was actually looking for that chairmanship so that he could, he could strengthen his position going into the elections for rugby Africa mm -hmm. you see the thought was the thought was there um, but the intent was was never clear, you know. And even as um, as Garuya talks about uh, the funds and the members, uh, you, you'll notice that also before these elections, usually the audited accounts are usually released at least mm -hmm. a month before to the elections. There are no audited accounts this year. Mm -hmm. They have not they have not been released. Uh, typically, no, no matter who is coming to office, they're coming in with already half a board decided mm -hmm. you know so they have to be they have to really bulldoze their way in so um back to richard i i think everyone was looking at kenya they've been able to see what is going on and you see not everything makes it to to the media yeah mm -hmm. but the whispers that go around and you have to remember that uh, anybody who comes out or goes out to play for kenya ideally should be an ambassador of the of the kenya rugby union um, if they're going to represent their country you have to remember we've been sending um, our referees there's some players you know so 
all these people, if they are disgruntled, then it's something that will reach the mm -hmm. the, the rugby Africa. Mm -hmm. And we also had issues around the Africa Gold Cup mm -hmm. in the previous years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Omuela was one of the people who was very vocal about how things should be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, his reception, basically, of some of the things that uh, the rugby Africa was trying to do, which was going to develop the game, are what are costing him uh, any votes. So I think... Um, it is his own undoing, and uh, at least now um, it came out to the light why he was trying to vie for chairmanship a second time. Um, and um, I don't think we should hold, or rather, I don't think Uganda is obligated um, to remain... Um, to remain in a pact that's not working for them. Mm -hmm. Because you have to remember, um, if we go as far back as uh, a decade back, Uganda helped Kenya. It helped Kenya. Uganda was better than us uh, rank-wise. Um, our 15s was dwindling, and they were the first ones to open the door for us. The whole, uh, the whole uh, thought around RFUA as an East African organization, the, the core people at that time were Uganda and Kenya. So when Kenya was down, Uganda picked our hand. But what have we done for Uganda? You know, just Elgon Cup, a routine cup has just become an issue, you know, just consistently going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Uganda, the, the women's rugby are even um, independently run. They have their women's rugby union, mm -hmm. you know, and the goal was to accumulate enough talent and they were working towards beating Kenya at the Women's Elgon Cup mm -hmm. because it became a benchmark, mm -hmm. you know. Well, Kenya was going to Western Province Rugby Union, Uganda was going to Cheetahs, mm -hmm. you know. So there was that healthy competition, and unfortunately, Kenya has not done its part di diplomatically yeah. to actually um, to actually encourage or rather maintain that relationship that the people uh, before us created. Now we're going to speak about Kenya Rugby Union elections mm -hmm. happening this month. I understand there is a debate that will be happening next week mm -hmm. at Strathmore mm -hmm. University. Three candidates have already declared their interest to contest for the top seat, seeking to replace Richard Omwela. Sasha Muta has been at the helm of. Mm -hmm as a uh, KRU vice chairman mm -hmm. and KRU director as well. Mm -hmm. Jeff Gangler, who's been also in charge of one of the top clubs mm -hmm. locally alongside uh, Owiro Asiko, mm -hmm. who was also in charge of KCB, I think, some time back. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, after withdrawal of uh, Geoffrey Ward, who mm -hmm. has said that uh, he would be seeking the position of director. KRU director. Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, getting into the dynamics of elections, mm -hmm. we've had elections before mm -hmm. in other sporting disciplines and uh, a lot of promises from aspirants seeking to get elected, but they never get to uh, uh, be implemented <laughs> upon mm -hmm. their victories. From these three uh, uh, men who uh, uh, expressed their interest mm -hmm. to get elected, mm -hmm. I don't know, we're not the best yardstick yes. to rate who is the best, but getting into the polls, mm -hmm. I don't know, what might be your word to the electorate, those people from a paramount fact of, you know, Electing the 58, yeah, 58 people who are going to be voting, yes. uh, or the 58 votes. Uh, each Kenya Cup team has uh, two votes. Uh, nationwide and Championship have one, one vote each, and the Executive Committee of the Union has a vote each. So that means the Chairman, the Vice Chairman, the Treasurer, and the Secretary General have a vote. Uh, Odor Gangla is currently the Secretary General, so you can almost predict how that vote is going to go in yeah. terms of uh, the Executive Committee. <laughs> but anyway, um, to the electorate. Um, you need to look out for the interest of the game. Um, you need to stop looking out for selfish interest. You need to bring in someone who you believe is going to um, attract back corporate Kenya. Uh, <laughs> the joke nowadays is that all the money that used to come into rugby through corporate Kenya now has gone to golf. So you need to bring in someone <laughs> who's uh, going to attract the corporates back. You need to bring in someone who's, uh, in my view, going to really focus on the 15th team. Because remember, our rankings depend, or rather our rankings are determined by the game of 15s. The game of 7s does not determine anything when it comes to rankings. So we need somebody who's going to focus on the Kenya Simbas, because that's the only way we improve our ranking, number one. And number two, we increase our money that's coming from world rugby. Yeah. Right? So we then have mo enough money to implement all these things we keep on talking about. You know, um, age grade rugby. Um, the structures that were needed, the sub-unions, you know, in, in, in Kenya. So we need to focus on, um, uh, we need to get somebody who's uh, going to do exactly what I've asked about. Yvonne, your take with regards to career elections. I remember you served uh, under Mwangimu. They did exceptionally well during his term as Kenya Rugby Union president. And uh, what's your opinion with regards to the upcoming polls and the candidates who've 
express their interest to get elected. I know all of them are saying that they have uh, proven track record, they have got what it takes, <laughs> they have competence, <laughs> qualifications. Yeah. And uh, I remember interviewing Sasha Mutai and he highlighted uh, about the mechanisms, the structures he seek to put in place in case elected. He says sponsorship has been quite elusive and as mm. Nara says, no corporate co uh, confidence mm. in the leadership and also the uh, government accountability doubts mm. <laughs> now that they have said that they will be coming on board after the elections, which mm. means they have some sort of doubts with regards to the current leadership. Mm. What what would be your opinion? Um, I think I, I am very excited about the debate. It's the first time that um, um, at least uh, outsiders like us can actually go and question because I think the electorate needs a lot of um, education in terms of just interpreting manifestos, mm -hmm. you know. Um, rugby, apart, the, the word elitist in association with rugby is about also in the way things are done. Um, we of all the unions uh, of all the unions in Africa, apart from South Africa, are actually um, meant to get much more in terms of uh, grant coming to the world rugby. But the little that we've been getting, we haven't been able even to account for it, despite uh, championing or rather being used to champion some of the. Um, some of the strategies that World Rugby was going to use to promote uh, rugby following and participation in Africa. So um, the electorate needs to understand that um, competency or not competency is not the question here. The, 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 the things or the promises that are being made should be actionable. Because for us, for somebody like me and Garua, it's very easy to go and question and say, you know, how are you going to achieve this? And we're hoping that's what will come out from the debate for the electorate to consume. The issue about uh, 15's focus as opposed to 7's focus, um, it's, not, it's not something that uh, is going to be relatively new. You know, World Rugby in itself uses uh, the seventh game to commercialize the game of rugby and 15s to grow participation of rugby. So it's not going to be something new. All we need right now is for the electorate to understand from the three candidates, you know, who is actually going to do things and in what period. Because we have always fallen victim to, right now, what is happening? Out of these three people, they are busy giving away kits and mm -hmm. balls. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that vote will be decided in that tent at the RFUA. Mm -hmm. The biggest, the, the thickest uh, word of notes <laughs> will mm -hmm. win the votes, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You get. Sad reality. Yeah. It's the sad reality. Yeah. It's the sad reality. So you find that um, a track record is nothing. In sport, you're only as good as your last game. Last game. You know, so it means if I'm going in for 90 minutes of football right now, the results after 90 minutes is what will determine my competency or not. You know, otherwise we would have players, um, would have some of the best players not train at all. But you look, look at the best performing rugby team. The All Blacks train day in, day out. You know, they have the biggest pool of players to choose from. You know, so track record does not give you uh, leeway or rather does not give anyone assurance that you're going to do it. We need to understand the actionable points, actionable points. So I'm excited about the debate because it gives us a chance to question uh, some of these manifestos that are out there so that the votes this time are not limited to um, to who has the biggest uh, word of notes, you know. Um, all this talk about sponsorship, everyone is always quick to talk about that. We saw Muela come in with the same notion, yeah. So, uh, Anyone who's going to sit and tell us uh, we're going to try and attract sponsors is lying to us because the system already is already broken from inside. Uh, Kenya Rugby Union was one of the first sports federations to actually have a secretariat who are yes. going to implement mm. uh, the workings of the union mm. uh, so that the political arm is separate from the administrative arm. Mm. But what has that secretariat been um, boiled down to, mm. you know? They have reduced the the work of the secretariat to managing, you know, uh, does the team have visa, you know, as in basically you're putting people who actually their rugby knowledge is way above. Because even World Rugby trained mm. some of the secretariat. Yeah. Top professionals to doing prof work exactly. that they're not mandated to. Exactly. But now what, are, what, are, what has become of it? You know, we want to listen to the operational, um, actionable points from the manifestos. All this talk about sponsors, if you do your work right, the sponsors will come. They will have something to buy into. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to end up 
Ngarwan, before we do, we will slightly speak about Kenya Cup, which yeah. is ongoing. I know it's 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 competitive, it's hotly yeah. contested, but last weekend, KCB against Cabras was a mouth watering clash. Yeah. I don't know from where you sit, you've been following the proceedings of the game. What do you assess of the run so far in Kenya Cup circuit? It's very interesting. <laughs> um, actually, one uh, silver lining. Uh, in the heavyweights not going for the seventh circuit <laughs> is that they have come to play at the Kenya Cup yes. and that has really <laughs> raised uh, the standards which we are seeing as especially amongst the top six clubs yes um, it's been a very interesting season it's been a very exciting season I always look forward to every Saturday when I'm going to be watching a game uh, you have the likes of Nondis who are now you know in the playoff position uh, of course everyone has been talking about Cabras because of the investment that they've put in and the three South Africans that have come in Henley Duplessis as a coach but then we saw what happened last week against KCB and there's some <laughs> sort of uh, positive vibe amongst people in because of, you know, we have made in Kenya, built in Kenya, locally <laughs> owned KCB and they've been able to beat Cabra. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting season. Uh, we have another maybe five weeks there, five, six weeks before we get to the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm just, I can just urge whoever's going to, who's watching, like if you have... And I'm sure you have a free Saturday and you, there's nothing yeah. much you're really doing on Saturday sure. unless you're going for a wedding. <laughs> just, <laughs> just go to the nearest ground and watch uh, the Kenya Cup action. It's, it's, it's very, it's fantastic this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne, you've also invested heavily in marketing and Kenya Cup, man. Mm -hmm. hey, the rugby is uh, attracting huge crowds, high turnout. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what might be the secret behind this rating show from you know, passionate rugby lovers. And even before you respond to that particular question, I know the presence of heavyweights, players who've graced uh, national team colors, playing for these local clubs, the likes of Andrew Amonde mm -hmm. for KCB, Dan Sikuta for Capra's mm -hmm. Rugby Football Club. Are they raising the magnitude and profile of the championship? Actually, it's nothing new. <laughs> Kenya Cup has <laughs> relatively yeah. enjoyed. Uh, Kenya Cup actually enjoys crowds and they're very consistent. The thing is, the people who go to 15s are actual rugby fans, mm -hmm. are actually fans and, of and the game. A friend of mine was telling me that, <laughs> that, that 15s is real rugby, 7s is cosmetics. Yes, it's yes, true. yes, 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 yes. Actually, 7s seven, was, was usually um, played on Sundays. It was a family hangout mm. and a few <laughs> guys would, you know, throw the ball around or the family. So, yeah. So, 15s is the real rugby. So, it enjoys a solid crowd, mm -hmm. you know. It enjoys a solid crowd. Go to any Kenya Cup game, you won't find less than 2,000 people on the field. Unless it's a derby, then you are talking about four or five thousand. But mm -hmm. Kenya Cup actually enjoys so um, it's not um, it's not relatively new with the crowds. Um, however, having the players back home is just that sense of we see them so much on TV mm -hmm. and now they're right here. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it generates some excitement. Uh, we've seen uh, players literally. You know, a, a player has open space to run, uh, but because this is somebody who has played on TV, they run right next. They go for the contact mm -hmm. as opposed to running into space. So it actually makes the game exciting, and you know what's exciting about 15s is the is the bang bang, is the contact. It's the contact so yeah. it's actually exciting because of that, and um, th it's very uh, inspiring actually because we have seen people step up a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, if Min Machine could uh, could beat could beat uh, Harlequin, blood, I think blood, I black blood. Yeah. Actually, we need, we need to get a, a <laughs> time and debate on the institutional frameworks yeah. and clubs coming from in institutional background. Yeah. Black blood from Kenyatta University, uh, Min Machine Mish, from Mish. University of Nairobi, yeah. Kwe Catholic monks, monks yes. yeah. and Strat you know their performance, Strasmolios, yeah. yeah. Strat yeah. and probably private universities. I think yes, they have yeah. invested in scholarship. That's yes. why they are doing good as compared mm. to public. Anyway, That's thank cool. you for your time. Thanks for coming through. Even your prediction <laughs> ahead of Argentina clash tonight. I know it's a late kickoff, but Argentina will be us. Battalion will be watching definitely. Uh -huh. yes. Argentina, will, yeah, Argentina beat us. will beat us. They're not heavyweights in rugby, though. They're not heavyweights, but um, if you've watched the game, they've played against uh, USA. Yes. <laughs> You know, USA are sort of, uh, they, they have this pride in Las Vegas. After they won it, yes. uh, they, they really show they up. They yeah? it. Yeah. yeah. And, you see, and you see how they've been playing this season. So Argentina beating US was a statement for them. Mm. You know, it was a huge, huge mm -hmm. statement. And you see, they've won uh, two games. So they're... I think they will beat us. And are we qualifying to the main cup quarters, Naro? Nope. It's, uh, no, it's, <laughs> no. it's a done deal now. <laughs> because we already <laughs> lost last two games. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. a yeah. done deal. It's going to be tough for us. So we wait for the next leg we to see whether things will turn around. Yeah, yeah, wait for Vancouver to see if things are going to yeah. improve. Thank mm -hmm. you for your time. Thanks for coming through. It's been the review of Las Vegas happening on the touchline on Y25. For this particular afternoon, we're talking matter sports locally, continentally, and even on international scene.
16. My name is Max Olwasiku. We're going to be coming up next to the fan zone where we give focus on international football. Several fixtures are happening this particular weekend. North London Derby kicking off in a few minutes from now as we speak. Arsenal against Spurs. Then there is a Clasico tonight. What a game. Pulsating clash. Madrid, the Los Blancos against the Catalans of Barcelona happening at 10.45 p.m. East African time. That will form the basis for our discussion. Don't go away. Stay tuned. This is the touchline.